second one is the lithosphere will start from the here only right lithosphere or lithosphere or zero shear right lithosphere or zero shear means uh, succession when succession takes place in any a nude rock right naked rock uh, where the vegetation was not there previously means the when primary succession start in a naked rock or in desertic rock right so uh, this kind of the uh, like this will be the sequence so very first what will happen very first the like the uh, plant which will arrive at that naked area where no vegetation is exist so those will be crustacean lichen right so first phase will be crustacean lichen stage and these crustacean lichen they will look like uh, uh, they they look like crust right so uh, the example is uh, renodia and rhizocorbon right again the question will be from the equation already uh, have been asked from this uh, examples so these are this is the crust uh, crustose structure so something this one something look like uh, somewhat this one so they will look like this one right so rhizocorpon and renodia will be two crustose like it they look like the crust like this is the structure of the crust they will colonize the uh, colonized by the crustose lichen so area will be colonized by crustose lichen poor in moisture and organic matter that area will be poor in uh, moisture and organic matter so temperature is as the temperature is extreme there there either it will be very uh, at the day time it will be very hot at the night time it will be very cold so only the lichen can survive in these conditions so uh, these lichen will produce acid and causes withering of the rock so they will produce acid and because of the acid will react with the rock content rock mineral and they will break down the rock by this way they will add on a very fine thin soil and when these lichen will die due to death and decay of the lichen the organic matter will be added on so two things are uh, uh, will be added on that will be fine soil because of the withering of the rock and the second thing uh, will uh, organic matter that will be added by the death and decay of this body of this crustose lichen along with that because of the temperature difference when uh, those rocky area where the, the day temperature is very high and the night temperature is very low expansion and contraction of the rock take place because of that expansion at the day time and contraction at the night time because of low temperature at night so these rock will wither so withering of the rock takes place by two things first due to the temperature difference and second withering means breaking down and the second because of the acid which is secreted by this crustose lichen so first means the pioneer community which will reach over there right that will be rhizocorpon and renodia the second thing after the hundred of year or thousands of year the folios lichen will come folios means they will look like something leafy structure so these this is the structure of folios lichen the example is parmelia and dermatocorpon right both have been asked as example by folios lichen which of the following is folios lichen that question i have seen so parmelia and dermatocarpan or the two folios lichen they have a large leaf like thallus but that is not a leaf they are neither plant nor uh, any algae so they have large leaf like thallus they are basically the lichen only they absorb they absorb and uh, retain the moisture and sand particle they will retain the sand particle they will absorb the moisture from atmosphere by this way they will increase the humidity right they will build substratum they will build substratum means base for the development of the further plant right they develop fine thin soil so folios lichen will develop soil like structure fine thin soil development take place by folios lichen then the third stage is moss stage now the mosses will arrive on those area right because the thin soil have been a layer of the thin soil have been created now polytrichum and grimia they are the two uh, mosses basically they will arrive in those area the uh, compete with lichen right for what for nutrition for space for photosynthesis so they will compete with lichen add further organic matter because now there will be more organic matter because they are uh, mosses are the larger in the size and they will add on the moisture they will add on the organic matter add further organic matter thickness of the soil will increase because of the arrival of the mosses mosses also have, also have rhizome right now the herb stage uh, some biennial and perennial plant will develop right so some biennial means for the plant will develop for the two year and some perennial means for the multiple year 
so biennial perennial plant will develop and habitat uh, changes from the extreme condition right so now the habitat will change mean the moisture will be there extreme conditions will alter because of the harvest stage right so habitat will change right from xeric condition from xeric it will become mesic condition means from desertic condition it will become uh, uh, amicable for the plant right so the harvest stage which harvest will arrive there will be aristia and poa now next stage is shrub stage in shrub stage much accumulation of soil will take place now the rust and phytocarpus there are two plants rust and the phytocarpus they will in uh, they will reach at that uh, uh, that uh, that point right that area so last that is the forest stage means this is the climax community in the forest stage the xerophytic plant will evolve uh, uh, will evolve in this area increase the humus in this area finally they will make the mesic condition now the development of the mesic condition will take place means mesic condition which will be normal it will not be a desertic like condition so this is the uh, sequence of the development of the plant uh, or succession in the rock that is called lithosphere or xerosphere is it clear yes sir. again what you have to remember examples and the things which i have underlined right like development of the thin soil they, they will develop condi xeric condition development right mesic condition which is the uh, pioneer community which is the uh, final stage means the climax community right it is comparatively easy than the hydrosphere but the question will be there and even i will give the question uh, i'll try to give you the question from the previous year question paper uh, these questions which belongs to uh, a sheer kind of thing right so now there are certain mineral cycles right the last thing is this chapter that is the mineral cycle and the first mineral cycle that is the carbon cycle right so hardly you will get question from this cycle uh there is very uh, rare chance to get question question from this cycle but still i will tell you i will explain this look <clears throat> in carbon cycle so the reservoir of the carbon is just uh, atmosphere so in atmosphere this carbon remains reserved in the form of carbon dioxide of atmosphere some amount of the carbon dioxide will be taken by autotrophic bacteria that will be utilized by for the, for the photosynthesis and chemosynthesis after the death and respiration right death and decay and the respiration they will release the carbon dioxide so carbon dioxide will come back right they will take the carbon dioxide and they will give back the carbon dioxide or add add a carbon dioxide to atmosphere now it comes to the plant plant take the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for photosynthesis and due to respiration and death and decay it give back to atmosphere now what happened the plant also add on the extra carbon because their root keep on taking calcium and magnesium carbonate so carbonate always have the carbon content right so they keep on taking calcium and magnesium carbonate from the earth rock and this carbon is added into environment now what will happen some of the fossil plant will become into coal and petrol some plant part will be eaten by the animals again the plant and animal both can become fossil and fossilized they will make the fossil fuel right but the animal which are living which have not been fossilized what will happen these animal will death and or decay and then respiration they will add on the carbon dioxide now what will happen this fossil fuel will be burned by the combustion and the carbon dioxide will be added so some extra in from this cycle some extra carbon is being added from the earth crust right these earth rock that is the extra carbon which is not coming back to the earth. now what is happening this some amount of the carbonate is fixed uh, is fixed in the oceans and this carbonate get deposit in the limestone form in the form of the limestone so some amount which is added on in the same way some amount which is taken back by the oceans right so this is the carbon cycle is it clear simple yes sir cycle just i will go through with the cycle in case if you have any doubt you can ask me but uh, hardly you will get question i am repeating it again hardly you will get question no uh, this is the uh, this is the phosphorus cycle right so phosphorus is found in the form of phosphate in protoplasm right protoplasm of plant and animal 
the phos animal ha also have the phosphorus in the blood they release the phosphorus in the form of excretion and uh, phosphatizing bacteria convert them uh, break down the phosphorus after their death and decay all these phosphorus get dissolved with the water right and it is found in the form of marine sediment right some amount of these sediment get deposited in the form of the rock this is called guano deposit right guano de deposit and these become the phosphate rock now the phosphate rock get eroded again these the phosphate get dissolved with the plant and uh, sorry uh, 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 dissolved with the uh, water and uh, uh, it remains in the dissolved form some of this dissolved phosphate is taken back by the plant right so this is the simple cycle of the phosphate phosphate is not that much uh, abundant element uh, in the biosphere you have to remember what is the guano deposit that's why i have made this star guano deposit the phosphate sedimentation in the shallow marine area is called guano deposit and they make the phosphate rock that you have to remember only in this slide okay what is habitat and what is the niche and uh, before habitat there are some general term what is the population what is population come on what is the population you always say that the population of a country is this and this come on tell me what is the population the number of organisms or the number of people present in a place mm. particular time very good very good good population is what is when you say it's a human population or deer population or lion population tiger population so number of individual of particular species present in particular geographical area at a specific time right so let's say the population of our country in 2023 let's say it's 1.5 um, or we can say uh, 125 million right so when you say 125 million it means it means there are 125 people which are living in this country in the what is specific particular geographical area means this country particular specific time means 2023 right what is the community come on tell me what is the community community is the group of different population right different population is called community so population number of the population means population of human population of the monkeys population of uh, goats population of cow they all make a community right what is the habitat and niche with the help of this diagram i have tried to tell what is the habitat this is a tree this is a tree where parrot live honey bee live and squirrel live right squirrel live in this hole right honey bee live in hives and the parrot live it in here in this a this these things right in right so this is the habitat so habitat is that place where a particular organism lives means the maximum pop, uh, possibility of any organism to find is habitat now what is the niche this is that area in which a organism reproduce and roam for the search of the food two things so habitat can be a dog for a dog a habitat can be uh, a particular place right a particular house but for it the niche will be where that that area where it room for the food and for reproduction is that clear 
Have we tied our niche? Niche have been asked many times. Clear to all of you or not? Can you explain niche? Look, uh, you have a, like, uh, there is a stray dog, right? That stray dog generally sit in front of your gate, right? And it sleep in front of your gate. It lives in front of your gate maximum time. So that is the habitat for that stray dog, right? But many times this stray dog goes uh, the multiple houses for the search of the food for to take the food and in many streets for the reproduction. So the habitat will be your home, right? The area that is the your home that is the habitat for that stray dog. But your complete colony where it roam around for the search of the food in multiple house, so complete colony will be the niche for it. Got it? Yes. Sir. Effect of abiotic factor on population. Light. So light decide the light decide the uh, that uh, what will be the distribution of sorry light decide the distribution of plant and animal at particular <coughs> part of the earth where the sunlight will be more there will be a high temperature low population density where the light will be moderate more population density where light will be very less that area will be very cold there also will be very less population density right now the temperature in the high temperature area normally this is important in the high temperature area the animal have lighter skin and small hair to prevent their body from the heat right plant will have a small leaf to reduce the transpiration where in the high temperature area plant will have like cactus they will small leaf for the reduce the transpiration leaf will modified into spine to reduce the loss of the water and succulent plant uh, succulent plant uh, and sponge stem why to store the water what are the succulent plant succulent plant have to store water Actually, succulent plant are those plant. They have the spongy stem, and they will have in a spongy stem there will be gel-like substance. That gel-like substance will hold the water, right? So those plant are called succulent. Availability of the water. So if there will be less availability, vegetation will be zero fitting means deserting the animals will be like lizard snake camel which are the adept, which are adapted for less availability of water in the oceans the quality of water will decide the animal animal and vegetation urihaline we have already understood that urihaline are those animals which can tolerate the wide range of the salt the sternohaline we have already studied that we have studied in the first chapter only. Predation, competition, we have studied this one. Right, so this is all about this chapter, ecosystem chapter. And uh, let me know if you have any doubt in this chapter, go through with your NCRT. I'm just going to give you two, three minutes. Go through with your NCRT and ask me if you have any doubt.
Any one of you, if you have any doubt. Next two chapters are very uh, simple kind of the question. Chapters, very small chapters. If you don't have any doubt, then you have to tell me. We'll start next chapter. That is the and the last chapter, which is the. Uh, Pollution part chapter that is the next to next to this one next to biodiversity that is very important for your medical exam. That is very small and that is very important. Anna, any doubt? No, sir. Okay. Iram? Nimra, are you getting it? Are you getting everything, whatever we are studying? Because I didn't got any response from your end. You can text me if you can't. Speak, you can text me. And at least tell me. Are you getting each and everything, whatever we are discussing? Tanya, what's about you? Any doubt? Heather? No doubt, sir. Abhinav? Alia? Any doubt? Fine. Okay. Look. So uh, now the biodiversity part. So uh, come to this uh, chapter, biodiversity part. That is the next chapter. <clears throat> Let me open the chart here. So. Very small chapter and uh, there are but there are a few things which are important so uh, diversity or biodiversity that was defined by a scientist a e. noverse and r e macmonas in 1980 it is not a very old term r e macmonas and uh, a e. noverse so diversity can be it may be of three types genetic diversity species diversity ecological diversity Normally, when we talk about the biodiversity, we talk about the species diversity. But there can be genetic diversity. In genetic biodiversity, uh, when we uh, we uh, consider the uh, genetic constitution, right? Here we take the genetic diversity. That is called genetic diversity. How we can define that? Look, if we talk about the genetic biodiversity, the Indians of continent have different genes. China have different genes. The people from the Russia and northern part, they are Caucasian people. They belong to different race. They have a different genetic constitution, right? The Negroes have their different genetic constitution. Americans, Red Indians, they have different genetic constitution, right? The Spanish have different genetic constitution. So all these groups, they all are the human being, right? They all are the human. They all are the Homo sapiens sapiens, and but their race is the difference. So their DNA will be different, and that is called genetic diversity. So when we talk about the races, there are only seven races of the human, right? But if we take the genetic diversity, there will be more genetic than the race, right? So when we take the genetic constitution or genotype of the human, 
that is called genetic background. Species biodiversity, species biodiversity means the number of the species which are present in particular geographical area. Ecological biodiversity means the type of ecosystem present in particular area. For sake of example, let's take about the India. In India, the northern part have alpine ecology, mountainous ecology, right? Mountain ecology. Western part have desertic ecology, right? Central part have music ecology. Eastern part have rainforest, that is different ecosystem. Southern part have peninsular part, that is a plateau ecosystem. There are different ecosystems. Lower, uh, lower one uh, like Kerala and all that, that part have uh, tropical rainforest. So there are different different ecologies. So the number of the ecosystem present in this country will be called right. If say let's say there are twenty or five type of ecosystem in this country, so we will call that ecological biodiversity is twenty five. Right. The type of the ecosystem are found at particular geographical area is called ecological biodiversity. Right? Yes. So biodiversity can be of three types. Now this thing you have to remember this sequence because the question I have seen the question from this sequence. Uh, out of all, there are invertebrate and vertebrate. So the maximum number of invertebrate which are found in this are they are the insect. So insect are the most abundant uh, invertebrate. Then other some group, then molluscans, and this then crustaceans. So this is the biodiversity of invertebrate. If we talk about the sequence of bio, uh, decreasing order of biodiversity of vertebrate, fishes are have maximum biodiversity. Then birds, then reptile, then amphibian, and then mammals. So mammal have the least biodiversity in our uh, 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 out of these vertebrates. Let's take about the plant. Plant we have also considered the fungi. By the way, fungi are not a type of plant. But when we talk about the biodiversity, we have considered fungi as a plant. You can see. So fungi have maximum biodiversity. Then the second number it comes to the angiosperm, then algae, then mosses, then fern, and then like. So you have to remember this sequence of decreasing and decreasing. Right? Remember this sequence. This is important. So what is the percentage that is given on the left side? Uh, this is actually the complete biodiversity, biodiversity of the plant when you include the plant and animal. So when we when we, when you include 70 per plant, 70 percent biodiversity is of animal and 22 percent of the plant, right? And rest rest belong to bacteria, virus, and all that. Okay, sir. This is from NCRT only, and uh, in the terms of biodiversity, uh, this is important. I have seen this question. By the way, this is not there. Is only a, one statement that India is the eighth largest uh, uh, bi mega biodiversity, but the rest of the country are not given in NCRT. I have made the sequence. The maximum biodiversity uh, on the earth is in Brazil. Why? Brazil have the maximum biodiversity region. What is the name of that biodiversity region where the maximum biodiversity is present? The area comes under the Brazil. Amazon rainforest. Very good. Amazon rainforest. Amazon rainforest, then Venezuela, that is a part of Brazil only. Right. So Brazil have the maximum biodiversity because this is near to the equator. So near to the equator, why there is, if somebody asks you why there is a maximum biodiversity in Brazil or Amazon rainforest, Ghana forest, Indonesia forest, they all are present in the near the equator. Because in equator, there will be high, there is a high temperature. And every day rain takes place. Every day raining takes place on the equator, right? That's why there is a lots of humidity and uh, high temperature, which is uh, good for the plant growth, right? So maximum plant grow in this equatorial region, right? So Brazil mm -hmm. have maximum diversity. Second number there is a Colombia. You can see, look, these all are near to the equator. Colombia, then Indonesia, then it comes to China, then Mexico. Then other than China, Mexico and Peru, they all country are equitable country. Mexico, then Peru, then Australia, then India, then Ecuador, then USA and Venezuela. Right. So this is the sequence of the mega biodiversity. These are the top 10 mega biodiversity of the world. Where maximum biodiversity is found. 
sir does this near to the equator rule also apply for aquatic organisms sorry oh, please be a bit loud so yes, does this near to the equator rule also apply for aquatic organisms uh, sorry uh, uh, right uh, those which are near to the equator uh, sir does this rule also apply to uh, aquatic no no, 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 not at all. The reason behind it, uh, uh, when we talk about the biodiversity in uh, aquatic region, right? So uh, that depends on the quality of the water, right? Uh, for sake of example, let's say the Atlantic Ocean, uh, that Atlantic Ocean is at the equator, but equatorial part at that equatorial part, it is almost frozen because number of the streams, those cold streams come on the area. So biodiversity is not there. But Biodiversity will be maximum. You know, where is the biodiversity maximum? Very good question. Where is the biodiversity, maximum biodiversity in, on the equator? Let's guess the uh, largest fishing zone. That's very really good. Uh, look, uh, the hot and the cold water stream meet at a point that is uh, uh, northern part of the North America. Uh, that is called Sargasso Sea. Sargasso sea. So, Sargasso Sea, the name of the Sargasso Sea, uh, because there is an algae name as Sargassum that is found in the maximum amount, right? Maximum amount. So, it flourishes over there because hot and cold water meet at that area. So, that is the best for the development of the fishes and the best for the development of the algae. So, the worst thing is with that, that shipping can shipping is not possible in Sargasso Sea because the propeller of ship, they uh, get jammed because of this algae, Sargassum algae, right? So, but the maximum biodiversity of the fishes is present in the Sargasso Sea. Search it after the, in the map, after the glass, right? Sargasso Sea. So maximum, so biodiversity uh, depend on the quality of the water and it is not affected by the, because you know, why? You can have a question, why the biodiversity is not maximum or why this rule is not applicable for the, uh, what, uh, this aquatic uh, animals. The reason behind it that uh, the sun is uh, capable of heating only upper surface of the water. Sun is not capable of changing the water temperature, the few meters, very few, like the superficial upper surface that is only affected by the sunlight and the heating. The rest of the water have the stable temperature. Pattern of the biodiversity. So when we talk about the pattern of the biodiversity, the same thing I have told here. Look, this is the equator, zero degree. And when we say about the tropics, tropic means the upper part, this upper line is called Tropic of Cancer and the lower line is called Tropic of Capricorn, Capricorn right? So this one, this upper one, this called 23 and half north, right? This is called Tropic of Cancer. This line is called Tropic of Right, and this 23 and half south is called Tropic of Capricorn. Capricorn. Right, so and this is the equator. So from the 23 and half north to 23 and half south, this complete zone is called tropical zone. Right, the maximum biodiversity is found in this. If you will move away from here, means the upside. This area is called, the, the biodiversity will start decreasing this area and least at this area, right? When you will move from the equator towards the pole, right? And here, even when we uh, move downward from equator towards the pole, the biodiversity will decrease. So this is the temperate area, right? The upper part, uppermost part, that is that remains the frozen, right? 66 and half north and this is 66 and half south, right? So biodiversity will decrease. So it will go down, it will go up, biodiversity will decrease. This is the polar ice cap, right? So biodiversity is maximum present in tropical areas. Clear? Is that clear? Yes. All, all the uh, part like uh, look Amazon rainforest. So this is the this is the South America, right? South American forest. So the uh, Amazon rainforest are present over here, and this one, this is African continent. The maximum biodiversity is present over here, right here. Right here. This one. So this is Ghana, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Niger, Chad, Mali, all these countries. Here, this one, Brazil, uh, this is Chile, and this is Mexico, right? So there's a maximum biodiversity, Venezuela, and, and as you can see, the Indonesia is found over here. 
right? So maximum biodiversity is found in the equatorial. So that is the pattern of biodiversity. You need to remember this one. You need to remember this map on your mind, right? Very, 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 very important. Loss of biodiversity, right? So loss of biodiversity, how does the loss of the biodiversity takes place? And there are certain, just give me one second. Okay, yes, yes, yes. So how does the loss of the biodiversity takes place? There are a number of the reasons. Before going to the reason, what is endangered species? Can you tell me what is the endangered species? How you will define that particular thing is endangered? And its population becomes very low. Only this is the area. This is the so which are at the risk of becoming extinct. Yes, they are about to extinct. They and both are the true that the population is becoming extremely low, right? And they are their population is decreasing speed, right? And they are about to extinct in future, right? So they will call them. Uh, animals who are not on the verge of animals who are on the verge of extinction. Very good. Yes, yes, Sanya. That is animals who are on the verge of extinction. They are called uh, endangered, right? So they are about to extinct. The great Indian bustard. This is. Let me write it down more clearly so that you understand after the class as well. That is a great Indian bustard. What is that? What is great Indian bustard? Can you tell me what is it? What kind of this animal is this? Great. Bird. Very good. Great Indian bustard. It is a bird. It is found in Rajasthan, and then uh, it is its local name is Godavan, right? Godavan bird, right? It's a type of the bird. The reason behind is it's a uh, endangered being endangered. That it is hunted, hunted uh, for hunted aggressively. It is hunted, over exploited, right? Hunted for its flesh. Now it is banned, right? Vulture. What is the reason behind extinction of the vulture? I have told you. No, no I haven't told you. We'll study next chapter. Bio magnification. A sparrow. What is the reason of extinction of sparrow? That is a recent one. And I'm sorry. Why the sparrow is endangered now? 5G mobile tower waves, their lifespan is decreasing. A sparrow is getting extinct, right? Endangered, it is an endangered. Vulture, DDT, right? DDT is insecticide. Great Indian bustard, over-exploitation. Sea cow, sea cow is a type of seal. It is found in Bay of Bengal, right? It is also endangered. And so these are the endangered. And what are the endemic? Endemic are those which are found exclusively a particular geographical area or particular geographical condition. What can be example? Like there is a Pashmina. What is Pashmina that I have seen that question? I was making a paper for a uh, paper. So I have given a question. What is the Pashmina? And that is a previous question. Can you tell me what kind of animal this one? Sir, it's a kind of a yak kind of an animal. It's not a yak. Anyone else? What is Pashmina? Come on, guys. Pashmina. What? It's a kind of a sheep or a goat. Not sheep, it's a kind of goat. Goat is the correct answer because you will get the option. It's a sheep, it's a goat, it's a rabbit, right? So, Pashmina is a kind of the goat. It is found in the very high altitude of the Kashmir part, right? Exclusively, it is found in India in the Kashmir part, Kashmir region only. At that temperature and that high and low pressure, it lives in that area. And the best quality of wool of the world is. Uh, uh, like uh, extracted from pasmina fine so they are the endemic because they are found in particular polar bear 
पोलर बियर इज एंडमिक पोलर बियर पांडा दैट इज फाउंड इन चाइना एंड पर्टिकुलर पार्ट ऑफ द चाइना दे आर द एंडमिक एक्सटिंक्ट दे आर नो मोर फाउंड लाइक डोडो डोडो इज अ बर्ड विच इज एक्सटिंक्ट फ्रॉम वेयर Which country? Mauritius, right? Red data book. We, it is this red data book. Who governed the red data book? That question I have given, like because I have made the paper yesterday only. Who governed the red data book? There is a body IUCN. international union of conservation of natural resources international union for conservation of natural resources iucn right it may it have a book it maintain a book that is uh, the called red data book and red data red data book we give the entry to endangered species right it have the green pages right when these endangered animals uh, become safe or uh, it, they go beyond the endangered we note it down them in green pages For example, in 1990 in India, the elephant becomes endangered. Why? Because they are mostly found in the Orissa and Chhattisgarh part, right? The people have started deforestation, so habitat loss taking place. Because of the loss of their habitat, those animal, the uh, elephant population decreases abruptly, right? Government of India has made the elephant protection and conservation. Act. You cannot uh, harm the animal. Uh, elephant now after some time within this the 10 year the population came out of the endangered right so now they are no more endangered in our country right so uh, previously they were uh, put uh, in the endangered red data book now they are in the green pages so the same book have the two kind of the pages red color page and the green color page what is the in situ conservation Tell me, guys, what is the in situ conservation? No. <clears throat> There is a line in NCERT. Please note it down. That line. then i will tell you what is the in situ and ex situ conservation please note it down more than 15500 please note it down more than the first line is more than 15500 species in world wise in worldwide facing the facing the threat of extinction threat of extinction this kind of factual question can be asked presently presently 12% of bird species out of them 12% of bird species and 23% of 23% of 23% of mammal species this mammalian mammal species 32% of amphibian out of them 32% of amphibian frog and all that right And thirty-one percent of gymnosperm, and thirty-one percent of gymnosperm. In the world wide, they are facing the threat of extinction. Clear? That you have to remember. Okay, so now tell me what is the ex situ and in situ conservation? 
No one? No one is going to attempt that question? Very simple question, but you will get the question from this one. Okay, if you are not attempting, I will. XC2 con con conservation is the, like XC2 and MC2 are the uh, conservation of habitats. In XC2 conservation, the conservation is out of their habitat and very good. C2, the conservation is inside. For example, in C2 can be botanical gardens. Very good, very good. Good, good. Yes, fine. Absolutely correct. Look, in C2 conservation, let me tell you. When you conserve any endangered species or uh, rare species uh, in their natural habitat, this is called in situ conservation. Let me tell you. In India, there is a rhinosaurus that is a two horned rhinosaurus. It is found in the state of Assam, eastern part, right? And uh, this is endangered. Why it is endangered? Basically, the Chinese are uh, the Chinese uh, um, purchase the horn of rhinosaurus in the crores. Right, crores of trees. It's way costly in the China. And uh, the poachers, uh, they are very well trained poachers. They kill this beautiful animal and they cut down its nose. And because of excessive bleeding, it dies. Right. So uh, uh, there is a very high security uh, for the uh, rhinosaurus. And we covered, we surrounded that forest area. And that forest area is called, has been named as the Kaziranga National Park. So we made the National Park. And we conserve, we uh, surrounded that area with the boundary wall, a big boundary wall, and the rhinosaurus are found only in those areas. So this is called in situ conservation. We have conserved the rhinosaurus wherever they were, they are found, right? That is called in situ conservation. Now come to the ex situ conservation, right? So in rhinosaurus, I have written the example, rhinosaurus in Kaziranga National Park, right? So then there is an ex situ conservation. What is the ex situ conservation? Ex situ conservation, we take out that animal from any uh, uh, that is, uh, we take out the animal from its natural habitat. For example, in Yamuna River, it become very polluted. Still, it's polluted, right? It become very polluted. Then, when the population of alligators, which are found in the Yamuna River, that decrease abruptly and they become endangered. We made a, a, a geological park, and that is the name of the Kukrel. So, we take out these alligator from their natural habitat from Yamuna River. We uh, started breeding of these animals uh, with a very fast pace in uh, a particular geological park. When there are a number of the alligators get uh, collected, uh, we release them in the Yamuna River naturally. That is called ex situ conservation. When you conserve animal out of its natural habitat, that is called ex situ conservation. Example, alligator. Is that clear? So what is the botanical garden? Botanical garden is ex situ conservation. We make a garden. And we bring rare and extra rare and endangered plant from different, different area, different, different part of the country. We grow them in a botanical garden, <coughs> educate the people in <coughs> conserve So botanical garden is ex situ conservation. You will get this kind of the question. Zoological park, ex situ conservation. Biosphere reserve, in situ conservation. Is that clear or not? Tell me. Yes. Sir. So let me write it down. I'll for example. Botanical garden, you'll get this kind of question. Botanical garden. This question has been asked. Botanical garden is a type, it's ex situ conservation. Zoological park. Right? Uh, what is that? That is the biosphere reserve. Like uh, there is a valley of flower. No flower. Valley of flower, there are a number of the type of the flowers are found. So we have demarcated that area and we have given the name of uh, that is the uh, valley of the flower. That area has been given the name Nanda Devi Biosphere Reserve. Right? We have make a boundary and uh, we have that that is that is the in situ conservation. So these were the two type of the conservation, in situ and ex situ conservation. Again, very important part, the quadrate evil. There are four evil which are responsible for the extinction of, of or uh, in, uh, extinction of particular species. Scientists have studied and they have uh, uh, came into conclusion that there are four major reasons for any uh, any species to become extinct or endangered. 
the most important region is habitat loss right or fragmentation when you uh, uh, when the habitat loss takes place then uh, the reproduction rate of animal decreases and they become uh, they are uh, they become endangered for example elephant what happened elephant were abundantly found in india basically in jharkhand chatisgarh and orissa deforestation started in all these area speedily when deforestation started animal do not have any space to live right then what happened anyway elephant basically they used to uh, come in the village and they cause some destruction so there the fight is started between the humans and the animal why the fight is started actually elephant do not used to enter the village basically the villages penetrated inside the forest right if that that was the homeland for the animals but people started making the uh, deforestation people start making the uh, uh, that those uh, started the farming in those area start uh, living on those area so elephant uh, get got angry because they are having it was their habitat so they started attacking so the clash between human and elephant started and by this way due to habitat loss the animal population elephant population decreases abruptly then government of india have uh, that was an encroachment of the habitat and the government of india have made the rule for the elephant conservation act in 19 and that's how we saved so first thing the habitat loss that is a major reason for the uh decrease in the population the second main factor is over exploitation i have given if you are over exploiting any species you are killing it for your benefit only right so they will extinct right for example godavan the great indian bustard uh its flesh uh, was very uh, like uh, popular between the people and it was preferred and they have lots of flesh as well so uh, they started hunting it right and because of the hunting the over exploitation uh the over uh, their population decreases abruptly dodo the same thing over exploitation stellar cow i have told you stellar cow that is also called sea cow it is found in indian ocean same thing over exploitation right so uh, the great indian bustard is found in rajasthan and uh, there is one thing black deer eagle that is found and also found in that area but there is a particular community which do not allow you to hunt any animal their their uh, theme and their uh, purpose of their life is to protect wildlife right and uh, the name of that community is bisnoi so bisnois are remember this thing you can get the question that's why i am telling you bisnoi is a kind of the community this it's a now title it's a caste as well in rajasthan region bisnois have the uh, it's their moral responsibility it's their duty to conserve the plant and animals you cannot hunt the animal you cannot cut down the plant and bisnoi always uh, protect them across the country where uh, wherever they are right <clears throat> alien species invasion basically bisnois are the same people who have uh, filed a case against uh, salman khan who killed the that black deer right so their religion is to protect the animals and the plant in rajasthan area third alien species in visit very important what happened in east east africa there is a lake victoria in lake victoria uh, there are resident fish which are the found in those area they are named as chinchilled fish so approximately 200 species of chinchilled fishes used to be found in lake victoria uh, for the uh, fisheries the government have introduced a uh, a uh, uh, fish that was the carnivorous fish it was it it it, it was the name of that fish is nile perch so nile perch was a carnivorous fish it was uh, it is used for the uh, as a food for the people so it had been introduced in that uh, lake victoria that were introduced and this fish this uh, nile perch started eating chinchil fish and there are uh, it decreased the uh, uh, biodiversity uh, in the large amount right so that is a, that is a example of alien species invasion right when an alien species is introduced from outside in particular habitat so you have to remember the chinchilled fishes and nile perch uh, the next one is invasion of the weed there is a weed name is the uh, carrot grass 
पार्थेनियम द नेम इज पार्थेनियम तो पार्थेनियम और कैरेट डॉट वे आर एवर इट इट्स काइंड ऑफ द वीड वे आर एवर इट ग्रो इट डू नॉट अलाउ अदर प्लांट टू ग्रो ऑन दिस एरिया व्हाई बिकॉज इफ यू इंट्रोड्यूस दिस वन दे सीक्रेट द पर्टिकुलर काइंड ऑफ द केमिकल फ्रॉम देयर बॉडी एंड इट डू नॉट अलाउ टू ग्रो अदर स्पीसीज द अनदर ग्रास इज लेंटाना लेंटाना ग्रास देन वाटर हाइसिंथ दैट इज इकॉर्निया राइट इकॉर्निया इज फाउंड इन द वाटर and uh, it's a kind of the weed it is also known as the terror of the bengal ecornia is also known as the terror of bengal it is known as the terror of bengal terror of bengal wherever it grow it do not allow to grow other plants right so lantana carrot gross ecornia you have to remember they are very 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 important they all are very important. right last but not the least co extinction if the host will die their parasite will definitely die that right? they If host will extinct, the parasite will also extinct. That that is called co-extinct. They are the core part. Tell me, guys, is it clear or not? It's clear. Remember, it's very, 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 very important. Not only important. Last but not the least, that is the conservation that I have explained you in C two and C two conservation. I have told you. So. and uh, what else is need to remember very important part that have been asked the earth summit so what happened there are some ten bodies in the world uh, the like united nation they have called a meeting the what was the meeting the reason, the purpose behind the meeting to conserve the biodiversity the first meeting which has been conducted that was the earth summit and earth summit was conducted in it was conducted in rio de janeiro in 1992 right so the reason the purpose behind it to conserve the biodiversity of the earth then the second summit was the world summit uh world summit on the sustainable development that was the second summit it was conducted in the johannesburg south africa and uh, 200 country 190 country participated and this was organized in 2002 right so 190 country participated in this summit so these are the summits which are organized you have to remember all these two summits so they have been organized for the uh, uh making people aware and uh, making the plan for the conservation of the biomass so this was all about this chapter go through with ncrt and let me know if you have any doubts go through with your ncrt and let me know in the next 2 3 minutes sir can you explain species area relationship sorry can you explain species area relationship the graph okay fine Uh, it's a very simple. Uh, this was designed by the Alexander von Humboldt, right? The Alexander von Humboldt said that if the area will increase, if you will increase the area, then what will happen? Diversity of the species will increase. That is true, right? So suppose that uh, in your country, if you take the area of one kilometer only, the radius of one kilometer. hardly there will be 10 or 20 or 15 species 50 species maybe 50 species 50 type of the now next time you take the area of 10000 10 km right now the species will number of species diversity will become multiple that is called humboldt alexander von humboldt graph right that is the species of the area the species area graph you can see that the graph is vertical right if you in, increase this uh, that uh, let me put the graph here Give me just one. 
let me show you that graph as well. I'll make it as well. This is the graph which has been given in NCRT. This is the SP species area relationship. Look, let me make you understand. Look, here you can see if the area will increase, then the species richness will increase, means the biodiversity will increase, right? So, uh, and they have given the formula that is a log formula from the log scale. You can log C and log Z, log A, right? So log A that is the area, log C that is the richness, right? So log S that will be the diversity, right? So if the area, you, you can see it from this graph, if the area will increase, the species will increase. But after a certain time, certain, certain, after a certain range or after a certain uh, limit, if you will keep on increasing the area, the species diversity will not increase. It will become a constant. So that is it. Suppose that you have again the 10 kilometer area, then two, then 100 kilometer area. But when you take the 1000 kilometer area, after that 1000 kilometer, if you will increase more area, then the species diversity is not going to increase. That is this species area graph. Clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. Any more questions? No? Yes, Fine. Sir. So uh, let's start the last chapter of the, that is the environmental issue. The chapter is a small, but it's very important. You will get lots of the question from here, right? But easy kind of the question. So first and foremost thing that, what is the air pollution? Simple. If you are, adding the unwanted things which are not desirable in the air this is called air pollution to control the air pollution in our country like in india we have made the air prevention and control of pollution act in 1981 right so in 1981, we become aware about the air pollution and we, and it, because before the 1981, there was not that much factories, not, neither that much factory nor that much vehicle, right? But after that, the factories and vehicle got established and the government thought that now we have to control the quality of the air. Then they launched and they introduced a, a rule uh, that was the Air Prevention Control of the Pollution Act 1981. After that, in 1987, they thought that the noise should also be added. They added the noise as in air pollution part, right? Now, there are two things, two kind of the things, two kind of the equipment. 
that is given in NCRT, they uh, reduces the air pollution, right? So in air pollution, this is this structure is called this equipment is called electronic precipitator, right? So electronic precipitator, it uh, like suppose that there is a dust or there are some carbon particles in uh, air, right? So these carbon particles are removed. So these carbon particles which do not settle down or the dust particle, fine dust particle which do not settle down, they are called suspended particulate material, right? SPM. This is the suspended particulate material. So this is called SPM. So these SPMs are being shuttled on by this one, right? So uh, this is this is the um, equipment, and these are the plates, some plates, right? And these plates, uh, they have the negative charge, and these plates keep on uh, uh, keep on releasing the electrons, right? So that is a negative charge. Negative charge are being released by this one, right? So what happened when negative charge and air enter from here? When air enter these air have the dust particle and the carbon particle this solid suspended particle they collide with the these uh, negative charge and they uh, get collected around these negative charge and the structure where the negative charge is in between and it is surrounded by the uh, dust particle and coal particle uh, sorry uh, carbon particle they called corona they become heavier and that they, they get shuttled down in the collecting plates and the pure air passes through it so when i are enter they uh, these uh, negatively charged they trap the uh, uh, trap the the suspended material and pure air get passed right so this is called air precipitator electronic precipitator right nowadays in the cars we are using the air filter so air filters also have electronic precipitator as well now come to the that that uh, if there is a pollution of the gaseous pollution in the air so for that purchase you we use the this kind of the structure called scrubber in a scrubber we enter the dirty air when dirty air or foul air enter then after that the water plus lime is spray on this air so from the water and air the water and uh, water and lime it absorb the harmful gases and the pure gases passes through it so scrub are normally used in the factories where the uh, polluted air need to be released in the atmosphere before releasing the air in the atmosphere we purify it, right? So that is the purpose. Got it? Got it? Very, very important part. What is the biomagnification? Can anybody tell me what is the biomagnification? Minimata disease have been asked number of the time. Like uh, I have seen the question, which uh, which is responsible for the minimata disease? Which body organ get damaged in this disease? Right? What is the reason behind this disease? Can you tell me what is the minimata disease or minimata disease? Whatever you pronounce it. What is the minimata or minimata disease? Anyone of you? Anna, Iram, Iram. Nowadays you are not telling me the answers. Arpit, Tanya, Heather, Abhinav. Come on, Minimata disease. It has uh, something to do with the nervous system. Very good. That question I've been asked. Which body part is damaged? What is this disease? Look. Where this disease is spread, even I have got this question, I have seen this question in previous survey question paper, right? So this kind of a question I've been asked, it's very important. Focus over here. Everything is written on the screen. Look, disease name is the Minimata disease. You can pronounce it Minimata or Minimata. Japanese call it Minimata, in English we call it Minimata, right? Both are the same. So the outbreak of this disease taken place in Japan. In the Japan, there is a bay, that is a bay of Minimata. So in the bay of Minimata, in surrounding area, there are number of the factories. Factory release their polluted water, and polluted water is directly poured into Bay of Minimata. So basically, the water is polluted by water is polluted by mercury. Now, what happened? Mercury 
every factory was releasing the mercury polluted water in the their rivers and then it releases to it reaches to bay of panimata so accumulation of the mercury polluted water started taking place in the bay of panimata right so from factory the accumulation of uh, this water taken place in the uh, mercury polluted water in the bay of panimata then what happened the algae so suppose that there was 0.1 mg per liter the volume of the mercury or density of the mercury in that water then what happened there was a algae algae used to uh, flourish in this water so algae algae used to accumulate the mercury so 0.3 mg suppose that so more more concentration now concentration in from the water comparatively to water is more in the algae it is found right so algae have 0.3 mg it's a just example algae accumulated 0.3 g let's say then fishes used to eat the algae now from the body of the algae it is transferred to the fishes now in the uh, fishes there is 0.5 mg per liter now from fishes was eaten by human right the larger fishes it becomes 0.7 g per liter fishes these fishes mercury polluted fishes were eaten by human what happened their nervous system got destroyed and the people become mad and then die right and this disease is called minimata so minimata disease so basically the minimata disease is caused by the mercury pollution right and this is the example of biomagnification what is the biomagnification 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 is the just increase in the concentration of increase in the concentration of the uh, mercury at every trophic level that is called biomagnification got it got it or not minimata disease and biomagnification clear yes sir bio means biological food chain magnification means increase of what insecticide heavy metal or toxic substance what sir this disease was 100% fatal this is this is 100% fatal lethal yeah sir. yeah it's a 100% fatal the person will die definitely from minimata disease okay sir mercury is very highly poisonous the same thing is ddt so remember this question even this question i've been asked two medicine have been two uh, medicines have been banned in india completely it's a crime to sell them or crime to make them ddt diclofenol so the question which came in the neat what is ddt so ddt is it is a type of insecticide what is diclofenol it's a painkiller which is used to give in the animal right both medicines are responsible for extinction of vulture why so when government came to know that the vultures are getting extinct they are vulnerable they are getting extinct right they are endangered so what happened uh, these two medicine banned because they are the reason behind the extinction of vulture now how does they become the reason ddt used to spray on the plant and it was insecticide now accumulation of ddt take place in the plant body from the plant body it is eaten by the bovine means herbivore animals when the bovine that got that uh, die the accumulation taken place in the body of the bovine uh, cattle right so when the these cattle die after the death they are eaten by the vulture when vulture eat the uh, uh, these dead animal then uh, the insecticide get accumulated in the body of the vulture inside the vulture calcium metabolism disturbed because of the calcium metabolism got disturbed the egg shell become thin and they break easily so there was no major addition right reproduction stopped the same thing with the diclofenol diclofenol was used to given to these bovine or herbivores or cattle right cow ox these all cattle so when these uh, cattle used to uh, uh, given the diclofenol it get accumulated in their body again after their death it is eaten by vulture and this diclofenol uh, disturb the calcium metabolism because of these both thing the egg shell become weak and egg shell formation is stopped right and the egg got destroyed so that the new vultures uh, are not getting adding in the population and that's why they become the endangered so ddt and diclofenol you need to know and biomagnification so, minimata yes sir so the ddt didn't had any effect on the body of this cow no 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 they do not even they do not have the biomagnification take place in the human body as well used to take place but normally that till date there was no disease uh, which uh, 
which have been uh, discovered yet. Whatever the insecticide, pesticide, we are eating with the vegetable, you know, these all are going inside the body, detoxified by the liver, but they are getting accumulated in adipose tissue, where the fat accumulated in our body. Yes, tell me. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Now, what is the eutrophication? Again, important part. Can anybody tell me what is the eutrophication? What is the algal bloom? No one? Sir, algal bloom, I know, but eutrophication, I don't know. Yeah, please tell me what is algal bloom. Sir, algal bloom is when there is a lot of uh, production. There is like excessive production of algae in the water body and they are visible from uh, from the upper surface through the naked eye. Very good, very good. Good. Right, you are right. Look, try to understand. This. These are the concepts which you need to understand. And uh, you need not to cram that because you will get the question from the concept based question, right? Try to understand. When nitrogen rich waste reaches to the lake due to the rain and water, so basically, where from the nitrogen is coming from fertilizer? So, people use uh, extensively using the fertilizer. When the rain takes place, these Fertilizers are washed away from the field and then they reach it to the lakes. Again, domestic waste, the waste, basically the waste which come out of the washing machines, means caustic powder that is rich in the nitrogen, caustic soda and uh, detergents and all that, they, it comes out of the washroom and reaches to the lake. The domestic waste, that is the kitchen waste, that is also rich in the food, protein and all that and that is the rich in the nitrogen. So when this organic organic waste and nitrogen rich waste reaches to the lake, it is start getting deposit in the lake, that surface of the lake, sorry, the bottom part of the lake, right? And then what happens? The water become rich in the mineral. It is broken down by bacteria. Water become rich in the mineral. This process is called eutrophication. So eutrophication is the process in which the water of any lake become rich in the minerals because of the because of the uh, nitrogen rich waste right now the second it give the birth to the second problem so eutrophication is the first problem it give birth to the second problem second problem is that the algae which is found in the lake because of this nutrition because of this nitrogen rich waste they start multiplying massively they start multiplying very fast pace and they make a thick layer of the algae at the top of the lake. This is called algal bloom. So my question is, which algae is maximum responsible for this algal bloom process? There is an algae, green algae, which is called spirogyra. A spirogyra is also known as the water silk. This spirogyra is the green algae, and this green algae is responsible for water flow. Right? Then what happened? It made a thick layer. When it makes the thick layer, what happens? The oxygen which is coming from outside of the uh, air, it gets stopped. So oxygen entry gets stopped, right? The same time, the bacteria do their decomposition of organic matter. Because of the bacteria, bacterial decomposition, bacterial decomposition, they require the oxygen, right? They raise the demand of oxygen, right? And these underlying animals, they also increase the demand of oxygen. So this is called BOD, biological oxygen demand, right? You will get the question. Even today morning, I have given a question, right? Which of the following will uh, have the higher BOD? BOD is biological oxygen demand. When there will be polluted water rich with the organic matter, what will happen? BOD will increase. So fresh water have low BOD and dirty water, polluted water will have high BOD. BOD will increase, but supply of oxygen will <coughs> decrease. Because of that, 
the animal start dying right so there are three phenomena eutrophication then algal bloom then blue. is that clear or not you can explain the algal bloom again huh? algal bloom because of the nitrogen rich sub uh, niche nutrient in the water so what alga require water and nitrogen rich nutrient when there the nutrient will be in abundant amount then <coughs> alga will multiply rapidly they will make a thick layer on the top of the lake and uh, this is called algal bloom okay sir example is pyrogyr clear to all you will get question so if there is a high organic matter then bod will be high, high. fresh water low bod low. right Yes. Okay. So, BOD. So I have given that uh, which of the following will have high BOD. Ocean will have low. Lake will have more. River will have more. Pond will have maximum BOD. There is a plant which increases BOD. Name is the water hyacinth, Ecornia crispus. it is the most problematic beet right it increases bod death of and because of this death of underlying animal in the water takes place and this is also known as a terror of bengal so it's a very popular question so remember the ecornia crisp right so we'll keep till this point only right there are only two thing greenhouse effect and other some topic so i will increase this i will uh, start these two topics and after t topic two topic in next class we'll finish this chapter and we'll move to the 11th class level that is the plant physiology right to so go through with this chapter and ask me if you have any doubt till this point any doubt ana no sir no sir no sir fine haider all clear sanya arpit yes yes fine so so see you in next class right and we'll start from here and after two topic we'll start the 